Hi everyone, today we'll be going over a general overview of the Australian cantilever retaining wall module. So if we go to head, if we head over to add a new calculation, we can um, add a out type cantilever retaining wall. I'm just waiting for that to load. Uh, and we'll see that for this type of cantilever retaining wall, the references we use uh, in this calculation to design is AS 4678 as well as AS3600 uh, and we list the assumptions of this retaining wall here. So let's move on to the calculator itself. The first portion of it here in the key properties is where we set the geometry of the, the retaining wall itself as well as the soil uh, height, so the retained soil height, um, the as well as the cover soil height and any water table that may uh, that may be present. So we can see here, we can set the height of retained soil, depth of cover, the water level. So if we set the water level to zero, we can see that, that the water level is no longer impacts our retaining wall design. Right, sorry, that the water no longer impacts our retaining wall design. Um, the height of stem, the thickness of stem, height of heel, and thickness of heel. So the wall base is this portion, um, which we're also calling heel in this template. So the four parameters, uh, and then live load surcharge is any live load that is um, sitting on the back fill of the retaining wall, uh, on the retained side of the retaining wall, um, as the pressure down from live load here uh, will cause the soil to compress and want to expand out uh, for the compounding in and lateral forces being exerted on the wall. Uh, and then the unit weight of water is uh, is also for the, is uh, impacts how much water pressure is being applied laterally on the retaining wall based on the height of the water level. And so once we've put in our, our geometric inputs, we can head over and see our soil properties. So we actually have two locations for inputting soil properties. This one is retained soil properties, so the properties of, of the soil that is actually being uh, being held back by the retaining wall. Um, and then we also have the base soil properties, so the existing so the existing soil that the cantilever retaining wall would be sitting on. Um, and that affects our bearing values um, uh, as well as how that affects our bearing and friction values. Whereas the retaining soil properties affects uh, the weight and the weight and lateral pressure of the, on being imposed on the wall. And so usually in most cases, these will be the same. Um, we will generally, what will happen is you'll, you'll dig out the portion to build a retaining wall and then you'll backfill with the same soil that, that was dug out. Um, but for convenience, if if backfill is being imported from uh, other sites, then you can actually enter them separately. So I won't get too much into detail about it, but um, we have we give recommended values for the soil property. You can set user-defined custom ones. Uh, and so based on your geotechnical report, um, all of these can be, can be considered uh, separately. And then we have the active uh, wall kit the active case for wall movement or the passive at the at rest case. And the active case is used for most cantilever retaining walls as long as the top isn't heavily restrained and a certain portion of rotation is allowed. Um, we, we consider the active case, which is which is lower than the than the at rest case. So the at rest case was for um, things such as basement walls where uh, the top of the wall is restrained uh, and we don't expect rotation. So the soil would be at rest. We also consider uh, static retaining wall mo movement um, as well as the dynamic retaining wall movement. So we can, using the Monobi or Katobi method, you can, you can consider earthquake soil pressure based on uh, the peak ground acceleration. Um, for the static method, both the ranking method or the Coulomb method can be used. So that is up to 
um, the discussion, uh, your discussion or the discussion of your geotechnical engineering. Then we head to the reinforced concrete properties. So here is where we can set the concrete properties as well as the rebar layout. So we can set concrete weight and type. Uh, and then here we can set the reinforcement uh, in the stem, the spacing of the reinforcement and the cover for the stem reinforcement. And then here we can set the reinforcement of the heel or wall base, uh, the spacing and the concrete cover. And after this point, all the user, all the inputs for or parameters for design have been considered. Uh, and we will we'll run all these checks for stability, um, loads, uh, loads for strength, flexural analysis, and shear analysis. And all of these will, will be summarized in the summary table here. So what we check for in this calculator include uh, sliding checks, overturning checks, bearing checks, and then we consider moment and shear failure for the wall stem, and then moment and shear failure for the wall base. So if we think about it, the wall stem could fracture or, or shear, and then the wall base uh, could also fracture or shear, and, and or the entire retaining wall could just slide left in, in this diagram, or it can overturn towards the, uh, it can overturn counterclockwise. So we consider all these modes of failure and the, uh, the utilization is listed in these uh, traffic light checks here. And we also note the governing check and what the controlling factor is. And that's all for the R-type cantilever retaining wall.